This is the Voice of Charleston Women podcast, where you can meet like-minded, strong, independent, professional, and inspiring local women. Connect. Learn. Grow. Let's all support each other as we rise together. This is Voice of Charleston Women. Hello, I am Erin Kinzel, the host of The Voice of Charleston Women, and today we have a very, very important topic. As we all still continue to try to navigate COVID-19, there's another pandemic going on that doesn't get all the national attention, all the media attention, but it's just as important. And this is our mental health pandemic. And for that, we want to go to the experts and talk to Jackie Atkins. Uh, She is the executive director of My Life Resources. Jackie, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Erin. Well, it's our pleasure because I think this is so important. You know, we've been dealing with this for, it's going to be a year before we know it. It's been so long and I've talked to so many people who, maybe some people that struggled with mental health issues prior to COVID, so they have that already, but other people who never saw a therapist, who never thought they had any problems, are now developing problems in this pandemic because it's all new and it's all so hard. So, you know, just kind of set the stage for us. What are we seeing? I imagine the numbers are climbing. The numbers are climbing, Erin, and and what we saw um, really back in March, um, end of March, was a wonderful article that came out. Um, well, wonderful is a tongue-in-cheek, but eye-opening for us that are in the mental health field that the mental health pandemic would be the second pandemic. And we are really seeing that. Um, We're seeing that, um, you know, just this isolation, loss of income, fear of of actually contracting the virus has has grown exponentially. And even um, in between... uh, March and July of 2020, the Kaiser Family Foundation did a survey and they saw a 20% jump just in those few months of people that were experiencing a negative impact due to the pandemic. Wow. So so numbers certainly are climbing. You know, what would you say? Because I think it's twofold. People who maybe were already seeing treatment to begin with, as I mentioned, and then people that are new to this, that lost their job, that are suffering from depression. What are you guys seeing? Are you seeing an influx in maybe new cases right now? Mm -hmm. We sure are. Um, We're up 20% compared to this time last year. Um, And and that's huge. We're, We're a relatively small practice we have 12 therapists. And um, so that's a huge increase. And one of the things that we are seeing also just locally, I gave you that national survey, but even right here um, in South Carolina, we're seeing 55% of South Carolinians report anxiety and or depression in 2020. And that's huge. So that kind of brings it home that it's right here in our backyard. Right, it's certainly right here in our backyard. So when you say anxiety and depression, you know, I know you go to the doctor sometimes and they take a survey, do you feel down? Do you, you know, everybody goes through normal mood swings or fluctuations throughout the day. But Absolutely. how do you know when it's a problem? How do you know when these depressed feelings are just not normal or this anxious feeling where you're afraid to go anywhere? At what point do you say, I might need to seek professional health help? That's a great question. Um, and, and one of the biggest markers for us is when we see it interrupting your typical life. Is it interrupting your job? Is it interrupting school? Um, is it interrupting and causing a real disruption in your day-to-day life? Can you not get out of bed in the morning? Do you find it difficult to complete normal tasks like going to the grocery store, doing your laundry? Do you want to just stay in bed and, and pull the covers over your head? And granted, we all have those days occasionally, but when, it, when you start seeing a pattern, and then, then that's really time to, to seek some professional help. Kind of walk me through that process because you said, you know, you're up 20%. You have a lot of new cases, people who have never seen a therapist in their lives before. How does it 
start? You know, are you doing most of the consultations over Zoom? I, I just, I ask because I feel like some people might be intimidated. Absolutely. They've never done it. It's totally mm -hmm. foreign. So just kind of ease people's fears. And let's, let's pretend I'm a new patient. Walk me through the process of how this would go. Yeah. So what would happen is that when you call the office, um, you're really guided through all of the steps by a member of our client care team. They do a brief interview, basically asking what you are presenting, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they might, you know, say, what, why are you calling in today, Aaron? How, how could we most assist you? And just asking some very broad brushed questions. And then if you don't know which therapist you would like to see, they would direct you to our website um, or they might just automatically recommend someone for you. But I always like to go read the, the therapist bios and, and see sure. what they're about. Um, and then we're doing a mix right now. Um, some of our therapists are doing all uh, telehealth. Mm -hmm. Some of our therapists are doing a mix. Um, I have found as a therapist, it's very effective to do video counseling. Um, but some people want to be seen in person. So we've provided a lot of um, protective measures. We have um, plexiglass barriers in between the therapist and the client. Mm -hmm. um, we require masks um, in all the common areas. So we try to make it as, as safe as absolutely possible if, if you'd want to come into our office. But you really walked through the entire process from the moment you call in to setting up your appointment mm -hmm. um, to the moment that you come in. And it's, it's really a very non-threatening environment. Mm -hmm. And that has been our goal all along. Is it's kind of like we are right now. I mean, you're so calming and comfortable. So if you were to do a virtual consultation, it will be like we're chatting right now over Zoom, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that um, I, I say to people, like, you know, if you would notice that one of your friends seems to have had a disruption in their normal behaviors, so normally you'd have a friend who's always wanting to chat on the phone or text or um, just hang out either on Zoom or socially distanced. Mm -hmm. you know, if you notice that one of your friends is um, presenting different, say something. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that we can reduce the stigma of mental health challenges is by talking about it and, and not being judgmental, not being shaming, but just, hey, Erin, I notice you really haven't been around lately. Is everything okay? Yeah, and that's such good information because I think we get busy and we forget. So what I hear you saying is it's okay to maybe text a friend and check in. Can we, yeah. can we just do a little role playing right now? Like how would you word it in a, a manner that's not overbearing? Is mm -hmm. it kind of like what you just said? That was good. You know, I haven't heard from yeah. you in a while. Is that a good starting point? Absolutely. I haven't heard from you in a while. Um, what's going on? And then it's okay to ask, are you okay? Yeah. And be prepared to whatever answer that is. A lot of um, friends in my circle we're very open. No, I'm not okay. I'm really yeah. struggling. Yeah. But then be prepared for that friend who might say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And really kind of digging. All right. Well, you say you're fine, but I've noticed um, you haven't showered in a few days, <laughs> or, which is a big issue. I, I think that's all of us right now. <laughs> I know, right? Or I noticed that um, you used to post on social media all the time about you and your kiddos. I haven't seen anything in a long time. Are you and the kids doing okay? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just those, those little outreaches to people that help them realize they're not alone. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. um, some people are faring much better. Some people aren't. Some yeah. people just aren't. Um, you know, I have friends that are extroverts, and this has really been challenging for them not to be able to go to dinner have a party, go to church, get, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's been really a challenge. Yeah. And we all internalize and deal with everything differently. I, I know we can't do a whole therapy session right now, but could you help a little bit with the, you know, the, the transformation that you make in your patients? Do you have any tips you can offer us today that 
anyone could do to try to maintain good mental health, whether that's taking you know, time for self-care, whether that's trying to really maintain at least some close friends, you know, what, what can you offer? All of those things are really great. Um, what I always recommend people that are suffering um, from depressive bouts or symptoms, anxiety, um, is it always helps to be grateful. And no matter how horrible 2020 was and 2021 didn't, you know, it's, we all have something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. We have technology right here. We're talking to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's finding those moments of gratitude mm -hmm. and a great practice is just to start your morning that way. Right. First thing, get your cup of coffee, sit down and say, you know what? I'm really grateful that I have coffee yeah. or that the house, you know, to, to sleep in, or I may have lost my job, but now I have a new opportunity to spend more time with my children and maybe restart some things. So yeah. an attitude of gratitude is always a great place to start. Um, the other thing is being aware of our thoughts, being aware of the fact um, that you might have a lot of negative thoughts going through your head. How do you get get that to turn around. And a lot of times it's just interrupting it and saying, ha, ah, that's, I'm really in a negative place right now. And just try to find some way, whether it's calling a friend, watching mm -hmm. something on Netflix, getting outside and, and walking around the block, you know, that change of scenery sometimes will pull you out of that negative thought process really quickly. Right. A change of scenery is a good piece mm -hmm. of advice. Do you see that with a lot of people who are working from home, you know, ever since the pandemic hits? You know, when you mentioned going outside to take a walk, I mean, that's just, you know, it can get depressing working from home when you're used to interacting with people all the time. Yes. And, and that's where we have to be really intentional with our relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's having a Zoom happy hour or having, you know, calling a friend, um, you know, we have to be really intentional. And it's just a new way of living. It's, mm -hmm. and, and it's such an overused term, but it is a new normal. Um, you know, church is online. Our small groups are online. Um, there's so many things that are available online. And, and yes, there is such thing as Zoom fatigue. So, <laughs> get out and I'm walk. almost there. I enjoy talking oh, to you, but I think we're all I'm, almost there, right? <laughs> absolutely. When we switched over in March, literally, we switched over from all in office to all telehealth in three mm -hmm. days. And then I was solid telehealth um, until the end of May, mm -hmm. actually, the first part of June. And that was tough. You know, you don't get up and move. Mm hmm. You can just sit there and click and go into your next session and your next session and your next session. Mm -hmm. So I really had to be intentional about, I'm going to get up. I'm going to walk around in my house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air yeah. and uh, come back in. I don't know if at um, My Life Resources, if you deal with children or not, but do you? I do. Good. Actually, so can, that's can my specialty. Okay, is perfect. Children and, and teens. Mm -hmm. So you know, we have a lot of moms listening right now. How, how is this affecting our kids? Because I see with my own children, the up down where they're fine. So where they're mm -hmm. suddenly really bummed out, they wanted to play their basketball game and it got canceled because of COVID, you know, as parents were struggling, how do we help our children? Yeah. You know, those are the two um, areas, female women and children that are experiencing the greatest need um, are experiencing the most distress right now. And, it's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, our kids, whether they're, you know, six, seven years old, or they're 16 or 17 years old, they hear everything, they see everything. Um, and I think it's, it's just as important to um, remind them that hopefully this isn't forever. Mm -hmm. And um, to be a role model. So if you're tired, if you are burned out, if you are anxious and stressed as a mom, they're watching that. How, how do you model um, trying to relieve your own symptoms? Mm -hmm. So is that, hey, let's go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Take your kiddo with you. 
Um, let's do something outside. Let's play a game. Um, you miss your friends? Let's have a Zoom date with them. You know, they're on Zoom with, um, with school. Yeah. Uh, let's get together with your friends over Zoom. And yeah. so I think it's just reminding it's not forever yeah. and being a model to your child. You had mentioned the coming from a place of gratitude and every morning saying what you're grateful for. Is that something that we could teach our children? Is that something maybe we didn't grow up with, but it's a good tool that they could start now and have the rest of their lives that would make a difference? Absolutely. Absolutely. Teaching your, your children how to be grateful for what they have and teaching your children to take a moment and just focus on that. If, if the pandemic has done anything, it has really helped us to slow down. Mm-hmm. And in that slowing, we're able to have these conversations with our children. Ask them, either first thing in the morning or maybe when you're tucking them in at night. Mm-hmm. Um, I tucked in my adult, not adult, but my, now they're adults, but my, my boys until they were teenagers. You know, I'd go in and, and kiss them goodnight and, and, and taking that time to say, hey, tell me something good that happened today. Mm-hmm. And really focusing on that. But again, if you see that disruption in your child, moms, you know your kids better than anybody. Um, Don't, don't be, um, don't delay in getting them the help that they need. Right. Great piece of advice. Before we go, I wanted to talk about how, you know, it's more affordable than people think. Maybe the price tag, some people might be afraid to reach out or try to get help. You were saying you've worked in other states that actually South Carolina is pretty good when it comes to mental health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So South Carolina is very generous in their um, insurance provision for mental health benefits. Um, Unlike some other states that have limitations, you can only go so many times. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to have a diagnosis or, you know, pre-approval. Um, we're really fortunate and a lot of our therapists here do take, um, insurance, Mm -hmm. but there's other ways too. It's, um, we offer scholarships to those individuals that don't either have health insurance or they want to see a therapist that doesn't take insurance. Um, and they meet a financial threshold. Mm -hmm. We will, um, for a minimum copay help them get the need services that they need. That's great. And then there's other places, you know, your church might have a grief group or they might have small groups. We have parenting classes and marriage seminars and um, life classes that, that also help yeah. in that regard. We, we haven't ta- touched on marriage. That's a whole different episode. That is a whole other The voice of Charleston women, I am sure that has increased as well with all the together time, right? I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen all that. We'll have to come back for more on that one. Yes, absolutely. Before we go, also you have that you're more than just counseling. When you say that, what do you mean? Yeah, um, we're more than just a bunch of therapists sitting in, a, in offices um, doing what we all love. We, like I mentioned, we offer life classes. Uh, We offer parenting classes for teens and elementary age. And then we do a wonderful um, 14-hour marriage workshop. Um, Our first one for 2020 is the end of January, the 29th and 30th. And it's um, 14 hours of therapeutic support for marriages. What's the transformation after those 14 hours? What have you seen? Um, what, I, what I have not participated in one. Mm-hmm. Um, so this will be my first one to help facilitate. But there's reports of marriages that were on the brink, on the way to separation, mm-hmm. have been turned around. So it gives kind of that shot in the arm that couples need to to move forward. That's great. Jackie, what is the best way to contact you uh, to see about getting that consultation, to get things rolling if you need to talk to someone? The best way is to go to our website, which is myliferesources.org, and it will inform you about our therapeutic services, our life classes, parenting classes, 
and the Created for Connection Marriage Workshop that I mentioned. All right, Jackie, thank you so much for your time today. Any parting tips or pieces of advice, anything you want our listeners to take away with them today? Yeah, I think the number one thing I'd like for you to take away is that if you see something, say something to your loved ones and your friends and help have the conversation to reduce the stigma of receiving care for your mental health. All right. Great parting words. If you see something, say something. Remember that. Great advice. Thank you. Jackie Adkins from My Life Resources. You can go to myliferesources.org for more information. And I'm Erin Kinsler. You have been listening to The Voice of Charleston Women. Thanks for spending time with Voice of Charleston Women podcast. Please like us and follow us on whatever platform you're using to access Voice of Charleston Women.